So that's just delicious. That's just delicious. <laughs> that's just delicious on its own. Hello, you lovely people, and welcome to my channel. My name is Coco, and I am in week three of my living on 100 euros a month challenge. The last two weeks have been very interesting. We had great recipes, we had very good food, but this week I think will be spectacular because there are some recipes that I have never tried before and that I really want to try this week and that I'm very excited about. So if you want to know what I'm cooking this week, make sure to stick around and we'll find out together. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is everything we have left from the last two weeks. As you are well aware, we do have a lot of pasta. I only brought one box of pasta out of the pantry, but there are a few more in the pantry. Then we have flour, because I didn't use up all the flour in the first week. We still have some onions and some garlic, always here. We do have still some black beans and some red lentils. We also have one can of sweet corn and one can of chickpeas. I don't know why I bought two of each last week. One of each would have been enough, but anyways, we do still have them. Then we have three quarters of a head of cabbage. We do have one sad half of a lemon. Um, I keep them in the fridge in these little plastic thingies so they keep fresh we can still use it you know for flavor then we still have two <laughs> vegan cordon bleus still now let me see oh yeah best by date was 4th of may now it's uh, the beginning of june anyways you know my credo you know what i do i look at it if it's not moldy then I smell it. If it smells good, I taste it. If it tastes good, I'll eat it. So we're probably going to eat it. And then over here, one apple, a little bit of rice. And then here, well, this is something that I did not expect. Well, the bananas I expected. I bought a lot of bananas and I didn't eat all of them. So we have still five bananas that look bad, but... They are not, okay? They are very, very ripe, but they are not bad. Which means we could, for example, use them for banana bread because we have flour, we have bananas, mm? banana bread. Very nice. We will make banana bread, definitely. And then the rest I will freeze because you can still use them for smoothies and stuff. So don't throw them out just because they, just because the, the peel looks bad, okay? They're still good. But alas, here I think... I have been defeated because I bought more carrots than I needed and usually carrots keep in the fridge for a while. They they went from oh really really good to uh, black and wrinkly and mm, in a few days. So I don't know what happened there and I don't mind the wrinkly bits you know that but these black spots no I think we have to throw them out. That is very unfortunate, but we will not use the carrots anymore. But everything else we can use and we will, including the bananas. Yeah. And this is everything I bought for this week. First of all, two more bottles of my favorite oat milk. I bought two bottles last week and I thought maybe I could use one for this week, but... I go through that stuff very quickly. I use it in my coffee, obviously, and also for the oatmeal last week. So I needed to buy two more bottles and I already broke into that one. Then I also bought a box of uh, peas, frozen peas. Then I bought a bag of carrots. Uh, this is about a kilo. One avocado. A glass of dried tomatoes in oil. Two zucchinis, a few more onions, because you can never have too many onions, in my opinion. One lemon and baking powder, because I was totally out. I needed some. Uh, one pastry, puff pastry, I think you call that. The German word is totally different. Blätterteig, but alas, it's one bag of puff pastry. And then two bags or two packages of meatballs, vegan meatballs, obviously. So here, a few explanations. First of all, I was so surprised that my carrots did go bad because I really wanted to use them for a recipe. 
and they died. So I needed to buy new carrots. And I specifically went to Edeka where I know that I can get loose carrots without packaging. But they were out. There were no left. There were a few broken bits of carrots left and nothing else. And so I had to buy a, a whole kilo in plastic. I hate it, but I had no other choice. So I'm really sorry, especially the people who subscribe to my channel because of the zero waste content. I, I really still try to do the best I can, but sometimes I feel defeated by the circumstances. Then the avocado, I did not buy for any recipes at all. I was in my uh, organic supermarket to buy my oat milk and they had this sale on avocado. So this was one euro and 40 cents. It's still as hard as a rock. So I don't know if we can use it this week, but one euro and 40 cents for an organic avocado, I could not resist. So we have it and I hope I can find like the five minutes between where it's rock hard and really good and going bad. So I hope we can use it for something. Then the puff pastry and the uh, baking soda or baking powder. This is just something I cannot get without packaging. So I thought briefly about making my own puff pastry, but it's such a lot of work that I decided against it. It's just for this one recipe this week. And well, the vegan meatballs. Normally I buy vegan meatballs in a cardboard box by the brand Iglo. But again, my trusted Edeka didn't have them. They were out. So, and they had been out for a few days because I was there before and they had no beforehand either. So I had to switch brands and I had to buy these vegan meatballs from Green Force. I bet they are very good and tasty, but they come in plastic. Also something that I hate. If, if I had not already planned all the recipes for this video, maybe I would have skipped the meatballs and maybe I would have waited to get some loose carrots the next day, but I didn't have time. So please, please, please forgive me. I will try to do better next time. And I know what I bought this week might look very random, but I swear to you, there's a plan behind it. With all of this and everything we have from the last two weeks, we will cook some very, very delicious meals. At the organic supermarket, I paid five euros and 98 cents for the oat milk and the avocado. And then at Edeka, I paid another 17 euros and 45 cents for the rest. And together that is 23 euros and 43 cents. So again, we are a little under budget for this week. For breakfast this week, we're gonna have banana bread. It just makes sense, guys. We have these extremely ripe bananas and they are perfect for banana bread. And can you believe it? I made it through the whole pandemic without making banana bread once. So, well, anyways, now we're gonna make it. We will use two of the bananas, flour, oat milk, oats, which I also still have, then a little bit of white wine vinegar, some cashews and walnuts that I had lying around as well, some cinnamon, some vegan butter, some baking powder that I bought for this occasion, a little bit of salt and maple syrup. I could not believe that this was hidden away in my drawer. I bought this at little a long time ago. Does maple syrup even have a Best Buy date? I don't think so. Does it? I don't think so. Probably stays good forever. Anyways, I bought it a long time ago and never used it much, but we will use it for this recipe. This is a good idea. And the recipe also says that I need chocolate chips, which I don't think I have, but um, maybe I have some cocoa powder. Maybe we can use that instead. Just a second. I know I have my baking powder here and my vanilla sugar. And I have definitely some cocoa powder here. So we could use that or... <laughs> no way. How do I have chocolate chips in this drawer? I never use chocolate chips for anything. Guys, this is not a joke. I did not put them in there on purpose. I really did not know that they were in there. Ah, I think a friend 
must have left them behind. I did tell you that we have a lot of game nights. And I think one of our friends left that here. I swear to you, I never use chocolate chips. So, when is the best buy date? Oh, May 2024. It's barely out of date. But anyways, it's chocolate, guys. <laughs> okay, we put the cocoa powder back. We don't need that. But we have chocolate chips. Um, that's a surprise. Okay, but now we shall make the original recipe uh, banana bread. Nice. For the banana bread, we first take two very ripe bananas and then we need to smush them with a fork. So, let's do that right now. Since they are so ripe, it's quite easy to do. They're very, very, very soft. Okay, I think these bananas are sufficiently smushed. Then we add 120 milliliters of maple syrup, which is basically everything that is left in this bottle. There used to be 250 milliliters in here. It's about half full, I'd say, so we'll just dump everything in. So maple syrup. It looks like a lot. I've never made this before, so I don't know how sweet it gets in the end. Good. Maple syrup is in. Then we have four tablespoons of vegan butter. The recipe said you could also use coconut oil, but I'm using vegan butter because I have it at home. And I just melted that very quickly in the microwave. That goes in as well. Then, mm, that's good. Four tablespoons of uh, oat milk. You could use regular milk, any kind of plant milk, whatever you like. I have oat milk, so four tablespoons of oat milk. And one tablespoon of white wine vinegar. I have balsamic vinegar, which is white wine vinegar. So we'll just add one tablespoon of that. I think that's supposed to make it softer or something. This is all the liquid ingredients. So we will now just stir that. Let me get a whisk. Okay. We have a whisk and we whisk that vigorously. Can you tell that I watch a lot of Frugal Fit Mom? Yeah. There. I think I just sprayed some on the countertop. Now we put in the dry ingredients and that is two tablespoons of cashews and two tablespoons of walnuts and I blended them in the Thermomix so it's easier. Then 70 grams of fine oats. Let me just stir that around a bit first. Then we need 170 grams of flour. You could use white flour. I use white flour because I have that, or wheat flour, but you could also use full grain flour, if you like that, uh, whatever you have at hand. It gets fluffier if you use wheat flour, definitely. So, that is in. Then we need baking powder, which I have right here. It says one and a half teaspoons. I mean, that's a teaspoon. That's half. Well, yeah, I should probably not dump in the whole bag. Okay, so we have this and now we need uh, a little bit of salt. Just a little bit. Some cinnamon. I like cinnamon. I will eyeball that. I think they said half a teaspoon. I will leave the 
recipe in the description box anyway. So pff, you will see the original recipe and what I do here is my own choice. And then it says 25 grams of chocolate chips. I will also eyeball that because can you really have too many chocolate chips? look good should I just stamp oh I'll just put everything in oh we'll leave maybe a few for decoration later okay and now we'll mix that all together mm. Mm. oh that's good okay I think that is sufficiently mixed. And now we will put this into a loaf pan, a greased loaf pan, and then we'll bake it in the oven. And here we have the dough in the loaf pan. I said you had to grease it, so that's what I did. And then I added another banana, halved on top, and drizzled some of the last bits of maple syrup on top. And now it goes in the oven at 180 degrees Celsius, which is around 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes then we will reduce the temperature to 150 degrees celsius which is about 300 degrees fahrenheit for another 20 minutes and we will have a look at it if it gets a little bit too dark at the top we can cover it with a little bit of baking paper it looks good and it smells even better and here we have the finished banana bread. After it was done baking, I took it out of the oven and let it rest for 30 minutes. And then I took it out of the loaf pan and this is what it looks like. And it smells even better. And I might have tasted it already, so I know it's really, really good. And I can't help but wonder why I never made banana bread during the pandemic. Hmm. I missed out. Definitely. The first meal we're going to cook this week is a hummus and sun-dried tomato quiche. And I'm so excited to try this recipe because I have wanted to try it for a long time. And honestly, I don't know why I didn't. It's a recipe by Pickup Lines and I will leave a link for you in the description box below. The idea came to me because I still had chickpeas. So I wanted to make hummus and for this recipe, we need hummus. So first we will take the chickpeas, we will drain them and rinse them and together with some tahini, with some olive oil, some salt and some lemon juice, we will make hummus. Very easy to do, doesn't take a lot of time. Then we will peel and chop up some onions and some garlic and brown that up in a big pan. We will add the frozen peas and also the sun-dried tomato without the oil, obviously, we need to drain it. And we will let that cook for a bit until most of the moisture has gone. Then we will transfer this mixture from the pan together with the hummus into the thermomix and we will pulse it up. Then we will put the pastry dough, the puff pastry dough, in a quiche pan or quiche dish. I don't know what you say, but you know, the round dish where you put in a quiche we will put the puff pastry dough in the quiche dish and we will stab it with a fork to make sure it doesn't get soggy at the bottom then we will add the mixture that we prepared and then we will top it with the zucchini and the carrots we just have to wash the uh, veggies and cut off for the zucchini you just have to cut off the ends the carrots we will peel and then we will make big stripes you know with just with a with a peeler we will cut off long stripes of carrots and zucchini and that is what we'll use to decorate the top of the quiche on the photos of pickup limes it looks so good and nice it just looks wonderful so i hope we can recreate that here as well. It's not as beautiful a flower as I saw it on Pickup Limes' website, but I tasted the filling and that is delicious. So we will put this now into the oven at 
390 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 200 degrees Celsius for 40 to 45 minutes or until the crust is golden. These are the instructions and we will follow them. You guys, this quiche is amazing. I may or may not have eaten it for breakfast, lunch and dinner in a row because it's so unbelievably good. Really, if you want to try any of the recipes that I cook this week, try this quiche. It's amazing. Try it. Go now. Do it. I will probably cook this every week now. Oh, so good. And the recipe says it's four servings. That obviously depends on how much you eat. You, you saw it. It's a whole quiche. So I would say I'm a good eater. So I would say it's four servings. But if you don't need that much, could be six servings. It really depends on your serving sizes and preferences there. But uh, for me, four servings. The second meal of the week will be cabbage steaks and meatballs. In my case, vegan meatballs, but you know, you can eat whatever you like. So first we will cut up this cabbage that I still have left from last week and see how many steaks we can get out of that. The rest of the cabbage will cut up as well in slices. We will do the same with the peeled onion and we will also cut off the top of this garlic bulb and we will rub some olive oil into all of that. We will salt and pepper the cabbage and then we will roast all of that in the oven for first about 25 minutes. Then we will flip the cabbage steaks and then we will put it in for another 10 to 15 minutes depending on how long they need. Then we will soak the cashews in some boiling water and then we will create a very creamy sauce with the soaked cashews with the cabbage slices and with the garlic and onion everything nicely roasted and we will season that sauce with some lemon juice I still have this uh, sad little half lemon uh, the original recipe says you need a, a whole lemon I don't have that so we will have to make do with that half lemon and we will add some salt and pepper and some Dijon mustard well this is not Dijon mustard this is Develay mustard which is a German brand but it's basically the same thing don't hate me French people out there I'm just saying it's the same type of mustard obviously Dijon mustard would be better but we have this one so we will use this one Okie dokie. So the vegan meatballs, we just need to heat them up in the oven for a bit and then we will serve the cabbage steaks with the vegan meatballs and the very creamy sauce. As you can see, I did an absolute cracking job at flipping those cabbage steaks. They don't look really like steaks anymore, but they will taste good and that is the most important thing. So we had four steaks. I plated up one here with six meatballs and some of that delicious sauce. Really guys, I did not think that cabbage sauce could taste good, but this does, really. Rainbow Plant Life knows what she's doing. So we have two packages of these meatballs in each are 12 meatballs. So I can have six meatballs with each cabbage steak. And we have more than enough sauce for everything. So another four servings. Meal number three will be pasta. Because come on, is it even a cocoa video if there is no pasta involved? Since I still have the pasta in the pantry and all these carrots and one zucchini left because I only needed one for the quiche, I think we will just wing some kind of a pasta sauce. We will peel and chop up all the carrots. We will peel and mince the garlic. We will wash and chop up the zucchini. And then we will saute the carrots in a pan in some olive oil. The carrots need the longest, so you want to put them in first. Then once the carrots are soft, we will add the garlic and the zucchini and some tomato paste and some salt and pepper and possibly some pasta water. And then we will see how it tastes. This is the pasta sauce. I cooked, like I said, the carrots and the zucchini and the garlic in some olive oil. And I added seasoned salt. I have this brand here, seasoned salt. I added Italian herbs and some salt and some sugar and some pepper. And then I also added some pasta water because it was 
you know, not a lot of sauce. And then I let it cook for a while. And now I tasted it and it tastes really, really good. It's very simple, guys. It's just a few veggies, but it can taste amazing if you use the right seasoning. And over here we have our pasta, a whole box, and now we'll plate it up. And I think that we will probably have some uh, pasta leftovers after that. The pasta made four heaping portions. And apart from that, we also have some pasta left over here, but that's fine because I already know what I want to do with that. And I admit that it is a humble meal, guys. As I said, it's just pasta, a few veggies and a bit of seasoning, but it tastes delicious. And you know, if you're living on a budget, sometimes you have to make do with what you have. And we had all these carrots and the zucchini and I wanted to use them up. So this was the easiest option. And meal number four will be the rest of the pasta, the bag of frozen veggies that I bought for week one and didn't use up, and the vegan cordon bleus that I still have in my fridge. And yes, guys, I know the best buy date is long over, but as I've told you before, look at the stuff, smell it, taste it. If it looks good, if it smells good, if it tastes good, it's probably still good to eat. And we all know the vegan cordon bleus are not real meat, so that's why I'm not too concerned there. So we will just put the veggies, the frozen veggies, in a pot with a little bit of water. And the only thing you have to do is heat it up, cook it through, because it's already uh, been seasoned and there's also butter in it. That's just delicious on its own. And then we will fry the cordon bleus and we will serve the cordon bleus with the veggies and the pasta. And that's it. And here we have the finished product, the vegan cordon bleus, the veggies, the pasta, two servings, and it is delicious. I know some of you don't like the vegan fake meat products, and that's fine. I like them, I eat them, not every day, but you know, from time to time. And obviously you could use anything else you like with this. I just happen to have them in my fridge, so I'll eat them. So, another two servings. And that, ladies and gentlemen, brings us to the end of this video. I really hope you enjoyed it because I certainly did. Just like the last two weeks, I am immensely enjoying this challenge. But before I go, and before you go, I seriously wanted to say thank you. Thank you so much to all the people who subscribed to my channel. I desperately wanted to get over 1000 subscribers and I did, and it's all thanks to you. Thank you as well for watching my videos, for liking, for commenting. It's, it's so important and it's so appreciated. So thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. And I also wanted to hug you. I'm a big hugger. If you do not like hugs, please move out of the way. But if you do like hugs, here's a big hug coming in. Okay? Oh, big hug. Big hug, big hug. <laughs> okay. I do enjoy a really good hug, I have to say. Okay, but that's really the end of the video. If you like the video, like, comment, subscribe. You know how it works. And I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.